from Columbia University. We have a bunch of interesting talks. The first one uh, is titled, uh, Building a BW Tree Takes More Than Just Buzzwords. Zikri Wang will be presenting this uh, talk. He uh, did this work as a master's student uh, and is now a first year PhD student and apparently is no longer working with Andy Pavlo, uh, he tells me. <laughs> okay, so uh, without further ado, uh, here is the presentation. Yeah, thank you for the warm introduction. I really appreciate it. Whatever. Oh, okay. Okay, so today my topic is about building a BW tree takes more than just buzzwords. My name is Ziki and I'm from Carnegie Mellon University. So the first question you may want to ask me is, what is a BW tree? So a BW tree is originally proposed by Microsoft Research as a log-free B plus tree variant. So the paper was originally published in ICD 2013 and in the paper, it is claimed that the BW tree has been integrated into many commercial products from Microsoft, including SQL Server, Hackathon, Document DB, and so on. So in the paper, authors also claim that the BW tree is two times to five times faster than an out of book skip list. So there are three key components of the BW tree that make it log free. There are a mapping table that maps virtual node ID to physical pointers. There are delta chains that serve as a modification log of a base node. And there are compare and swap instructions that serialize worker threads. So we will see an example that explains these three major components. So here is an example of a simple BW tree with three base nodes and one delta node. So in order to implement delta updates, there are two kinds of nodes in general in BW tree. So we have base node whose background is gray. Uh, background, uh, base nodes are just like regular B plus three nodes with sorted key and value pairs stored directly in the node itself. We also have delta node whose background is white. So as I just said, delta node serves as the modification log of a base node because in the BW tree, base nodes are immutable. So if a worker thread hopes to update the tree, what it should do? First of all, the worker thread allocates a new chunk of memory called a delta node. Then the worker thread stores in the delta node both the operation and the data with the operation in the delta node. The last and the most important step for the worker thread to do is to use compare and swap to change the reference, the physical pointer from the parent node from the old one to the new one. That's serializing worker threads. So there can be only one worker thread succeeding in this process and all other worker threads will fail the compare and swap and then retry from the root of the tree. So now we have a linked list structure on top of the base node and we call it uh, actually, Microsoft calls it the delta chain. This simple way of updating a base node, unfortunately, is wrong because it introduces inconsistent result. Imagine, in the previous example, after the update, if another worker thread traverses to leaf node 102 from its sibling 104 through the sibling link, then actually that worker thread would observe an inconsistent view of the leaf node 102 because it can't, op it can't see the most up-to-date snapshot of the delta chain. To solve that problem, in the original BW3 paper, they also added something called a mapping table. The functionality of the mapping table is to map a virtual node ID into a physical pointer. And with the addition of the mapping table, now, uh, now, nodes within BW tree refer to each other using not the physical address, but the virtual node ID. So whenever a, a worker thread wants to traverse to another node, the first step it needs to do is to use the virtual node ID to probe the mapping table and then translate it into the physical address and then 
access the node directly. So with the addition of the mapping table, now updating a BW3 node becomes simpler, actually. So now worker threads no longer perform compare and swap operations inside the node. Instead, worker threads just, com uh, just perform compare and swap operation on the mapping table entry, as in this example. So here, the worker thread just does a compare and swap on mapping table entry 102, and then it atomically swaps both the pointer from the parent node and the pointer from the sibling node in one atomic step. So at Carnegie Mellon, we were also motivated by Microsoft's BW3 paper, and uh, we wanted to implement it for our in-memory database called Peloton. The first version of the BW3 was a direct translation from the Microsoft paper without any optimization added. And we observed very poor performance out of the first version because there is no optimization and we coded it up in a conservative way. Then we spent another six months optimizing the BW3, adding new components into the BW3 to make it suitable for our Peloton and uh, now the current version of the BW3 has all optimizations enabled and it is now deployed as the main memory index engine of Peloton. We also consulted with the BW3 developer at Microsoft to make sure that we are actually optimizing it at the correct direction. So we are confident that our result can somehow approximate the uh, real performance characteristics of the BW3. And we call our version of the BW3 as Open BW3, and obviously we open source it and put it on GitHub. So the link is here. So two major questions about today's talk are as follows. Question one, we want to know how does Open BW3 compare with other indexes? Because as database designers, it is our responsibility to figure out how does an index perform compared with other indexes and based on that we make choices and trade-offs. Second question, we want to know does lock-free features in the BW3 cause noticeable slowdown? This is also important because in future designs of lock-free data structures we hope that we can have some information about different trade-offs and overheads of lock-free features such that we can apply them in a smart way. So that's exactly what our paper is trying to answer. So we summarize the contribution of our paper as follows. So first, we believe that our paper is the first comprehensive study of OpenBW3's performance. Second, we use OpenBW3 to show how log-free features can affect the performance of a log-free data structure. And also in our paper, we describe many optimizations that we apply to OpenBW3. Many of them are very interesting, such as a scalable garbage collection, a uh, scalable garbage collector, actually, uh, pre-allocation for delta nodes within the base node. And we also have a few efficient algorithm for performing binary search and delta replay on the delta chain. So we don't present these optimizations today, but if you are really interested, feel free to check out our paper and uh, find them. A little, a little bit caveat before we really go into concrete numbers. First, all of our experiments are in memory. So that implies we don't have any memory SSD hybrid system. This is important and worth mentioning because in the Microsoft paper, the BW3 was designed to optimize right into SSD. So basically, BW3 is optimized for memory and SSD hybrid system and we are only evaluated for in-memory workloads. Second, we don't have logging, we don't use SSD, and uh, all of our experiments are done using YCSB benchmark. So, as previously mentioned, we compare the BW3 against several other few indexes. So what are they? The first index is Mastery from MIT and Harvard and published in 2012. It's a hybrid of tri structure and B plus tree. The second structure is a skip list called No Hotspot non-blocking skip list from University of Sydney and published in 2013. The last two data structures are B3 and Adaptive Redix tree with OLC published in 2016 and is from German University TUM. 
So, o, so OLC here stands for optimistic lock coupling, and uh, it's an efficient way of implementing spin locks in an architecture-friendly way. So in the OWC paper, it was claimed that OWC can outperform uh, both lock-free data structures and uh, traditional spin locking, and we will see whether this is true or not in the next few slides. A little bit about our configuration. All of our experiments are conducted on a 10 core Xeon server with 20 hardware threads. We have three workloads to present today. One is insert only with 100% insert, YCSBA with half read, half update, and YCFBC, which is again read only. All keys and values for today's talk are 8 byte integers. Uh, in our paper, we also have varchar type or string uh, email key type evaluated. Uh, we observed similar trends for both integer workloads and email workloads, so today we just present integer workloads. Okay, enough about it. Now let's go into actual numbers. So first of all, I present the insert only benchmark with 20 worker threads that inserts 50 million randomly generated keys over the integer domain. In this picture, the y-axis is million operations per second, which is the throughput of the index, so higher is better. X-axis is the index types. As we can clearly see from this picture, Arch OLC obviously has the best performance and it is four point time faster than Open BW tree. So what follows the art is mastery, which is also 1.8 times faster. So one good thing about Open BW tree is that it is faster than B tree with optimistic lock coupling by about 20%. And uh, skip list is on the bottom, so it's only one fourth of the throughput of Open BW tree. Then, here is read update benchmark. In this picture, ART OLC is still the fattest one, which is 3.2 times faster than the open BW tree, followed by B tree, then math tree. So skip list in this picture is also the slowest data structure. So after these two workloads, now we have a question. Why open BW tree inserts faster than B tree with OLC? To explain that, we rerun the insert only workloads with 20 worker thread and 50 million randomly generated keys perfectly as the previous experiment. Then we measured micro benchmarks such as last level cache misses using Linux utility perf. In this picture, the y axis is the number of cache misses me measured in billion, and the x axis is again the index type. As we can clearly see, Skip list has the highest number of cache misses due to its linked structure. Then followed by B tree, then BW tree, and math tree and art. We can see a clear correspondence between the insert only throughput and number of cache misses. And the correspondence shows that the higher cache miss numbers is, the lower throughput there will be for any index structure in this picture. Then we, we need to explain the second question. Why open BW tree reads slower than B tree with optimistic log coupling? So we did another different uh, experiment with YCSBC read only with only a single thread on the index populated with 50 million random keys. We begin from the open BW tree and then we incrementally remove the log free features of the open BW tree. So the first feature we remove is the delta chain. So now worker threads do not replace the delta chain, but they directly conduct binary search on base nodes. By doing that, we observed a 23% performance improvement. So that's probably an implication that delta chain causes slowdown in the open BW tree's traversal process. Then we removed STD atomic in C++. So now the open BW tree only uses normal memory load and store operations for read-only workload. Uh, but unfortunately, there is no speed up. So we conclude that STD atomic is not a cause for slowness in OpenBW tree. The last step, we removed the mapping table. So now both the sibling node and the parent node stores physical pointers to the child node or to another sibling node. So by doing that, we observed another 18% of performance improvement. So that's a suggestion that the mapping table might be another cause for slowdown because of the cache misses or because of the random memory read-write patterns it introduces. 
after doing all of this, the open bitter tree is still 13% slower than B3 OLC. So our explanation is that it might be caused by bookkeeping overhead or simply caused by longer instruction sequences between the two, uh, between open bitter tree and B3. Now recall the two questions. Question one, how does open bitter tree compare with other indexes? The answer is, well, it depends. If you only care about in-memory performance, then in general, open BW tree is not as fast as art or mastery. If you, however, wants to implement a system with hybrid memory and SSD, then perhaps open BW tree or BW tree is still worth considering because the insert only performance of the BW tree meets our expectation. It's faster than B plus tree. Second question, does log free features in BW tree cause noticeable slowdown? Our answer is simple and clear, yes. More observations. First, optimistic log coupling, or OLC, from TUM in German, by the way, is effective in reducing locking overheads on modern architecture. So this has been verified by our experiments because ART always has the best performance. Second, synchronization using background thread does not work well for large data sets as in the skip list. We do not have any concrete explanation, but we believe it was caused by the background threat not being able to traverse the data structure fast enough. Our last observation, also the most interesting one, is that writing an open BW tree is not easy, even for me. <laughs> <laughs> so there were like 10,000 lines of code in BW tree, and it took me and uh, my fellow students, my fellow colleagues, nine months to code it up and optimize it. So the entire code for BW tree is dense and complex compared with B plus tree, at least in our open BW tree repository. That's all, questions, thank you. So if you have questions, please come to the microphone. I don't remember uh, us blessing anything that you did. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, this, is, this is why nobody takes notes, right? Um, so um, the, the Delta updates received some, some uh, negative press from you. Uh, I just want to mention one couple of things that they they're, they're really enable. So first of all, if you're trying to reduce I.O., which is not, of course, your focus, uh, then blind writes can be implemented without actually accessing the base page. So the base page doesn't have to be in memory, and you can avoid an I.O. Similarly, the, the, the Delta updates serve as a, as a uh, record-oriented read cache. So, so uh, that's another example of, of an effort to avoid, avoid I.O. Uh, um, so I had, uh, let me see, um, you talked about, I think you talked about pre-allocation. So, so I had a, I had a uh, talk in, in Damon yesterday which talked about trade-offs between uh, processing, processing and uh, memory. And if you, if you uh, allocate plenty of memory, you can almost always, uh, ahead of time, you can obviously remove uh, the allocation from your, your uh, execution path in a lot of cases. But on the other hand, you're paying for that because you're consuming memory, which is a storage cost, which you always pay, and which you have to ask yourself whether or not you're getting a good deal on the, on the thing. Generally speaking, and I'll just say one more comment about uh, uh, a hybrid, which you refer to as hybrid method, which is if you want to worry about cost performance and not just performance, then to control storage costs, you in fact need a hybrid uh, access method, which en enables you to push uh, data out to secondary storage. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I totally agree with what you said. And uh, so because our evaluation is pure for in-memory workloads, so say our method uh, may be too restrictive in order to consider the BW3 in a broader domain. So still, good comment. So I did have one more comment. <laughs> <laughs> so Dipta and Justin implemented the original BW3 with Llama. Uh, in uh, less than nine months. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing to know. Thank you, see you. <laughs>